Hello class, I hope you all are doing well and you have received the study material for 2.2 and 2.4. In these online lectures, I will be discussing with you about the instruments that we use in gravity prospecting. We have already discussed the principle behind gravimeters, but in this particular lecture, I'm going to discuss with you about the stable gravimeters, their principle and the types of stable gravimeters, okay? We already studied what are gravimeters. Gravimeters, they are very sensitive weighing instrument that are capable of measuring very small changes in the value of gravity, which arise because of lateral changes in the density within the crust. And these small changes in the value of gravity are often less than 0.1 milligal, but they are very useful in gravity prospecting. So, gravimeters, they are made very sensitive and this sensitivity of gravimeters, they are achieved by the unique construction or design. And so, on the basis of design in the working principle, we have classified gravimeters into stable gravimeters and unstable gravimeters. So, let's see how stable gravimeters work. What is the working principle behind stable gravimeters? All stable gravimeters, they contain a responsive element, which shows some sort of displacement because of small changes in the value of gravity. So this displacement from the equilibrium position is also very small because they are in proportional to the small variations in the gravity. The displacement is also a measure of the restoring force, which counteracts or balances the force of gravity. So any deviation from the reference position, the restoring force tries to bring it back to the reference or the null position. That is, the stability of the instrument is restored. And so these gravimeters are referred to as stable gravimeters. Since the displacement are very small because they are in proportional to the small changes in the value of gravity and the displacement can be either linear, electrical or angular. And they are magnified by optical, mechanical or electrical means so that they can be readily detected. Let, consider, let's, uh, let us consider a simple case. If we have a spring, that is the balancing element, and it suspends a mass, because of small changes in the value of gravity, there would be change in the weight of the mass, and there would be there would be displacement in the spring. This displacement would be the measure of a restoring force in the spring, which counteracts against the gravity change. The restoring force is given by Hooke's law which here is equal to the changing weight. So, if x is the length after elongation, that is, x is the length after the small changes in the value of gravity, and m here is also constant, we can calculate the value of g, the changes in the g, the relative changes in the g before elongation and after elongation. So, if we have to summarize, Stable gravimeters, they contain an element which show very small displacement and this small displacement, they are magnified by electrical, mechanical or optical means so that they can be detected. There is a restoring force which tends to bring the whole instrument back to its reference or null position. That is, the instrument, the stability of the instrument is restored and so these gravimeters are referred to as stable gravimeters. So we'll, in the next slides, we'll see how different stable gravimeters follow this principle. The first one is Hartley gravimeters. Now Hartley gravimeter consists of two springs. First is the main spring which is connected to the beam and then it suspends a weight. And the other one is the adjusting spring or also called the null spring or the auxiliary spring. Okay, So whenever there is changes in the value of gravity there is corresponding changes in the weight and thus there are changes in the length of the main spring from the fixed reference position. Here, the null spring is then introduced, the, wor the, the working of the null spring is then introduced. The main spring is then returned to its reference position by rotating the micrometer screw, which loosens or strengthens the adjusting spring so that the main spring is returned back to its reference position. The number of rotation of the micrometer screw that you have to do in order to bring the main spring back to its reference position is the measure of the deviation of gravity from the reference position. So here you can see the magnification is mechanical because you are counting the number of rotations that you have to do in order to bring the main spring back to its original 
reference position. The other magnification here is optical. A mirror is placed on the far right hand side of the beam. So if there is changes in the weight, the, there is also motion within the beam. Now since mirror is placed at the far right hand side of the corner, the rotation here, the sorry, the motion here in the mirror is more. So any light which is coming from a light source to the mirror, because of motion it's deflected and there is corresponding increase in the optical path. This optic, the increase in the optical path thus magnifies the motion which has been produced by the changes in the value of gravity. So the magnification here achieved is 5000 times and the accuracy of Hartley gravimeters is 1 milligal. The next type of stable gravimeters are Gulf gravimeter or Hoyt gravimeter. Now Gulf gravimeter they contain a ribbon spring. Uh, the flat surface of the ribbon spring they are parallel to the axis of rotation and it looks like a helix and it suspends a weight beneath it. Now whenever there is changes in the value of gravity there is not only elongation but there is also some rotation and in the Gulf gravimeter it is the rotation which is measured. Now the rotation is measured by a mirror which is suspended beneath the weight at the bottom of the weight. So whenever there is a rotation there is deflection in the light. Using a system of mirror this deflection in the in the light in the light path because of rotation is thus magnified okay so the motion of rotation is magnified by a means by a system of mirror which is attached at the attached at the base so in this case what we are magnifying is the rotation because of the change in the value of gravity okay the accuracy of gulf gra gravimeter is 0.02 milligal next type of gravimeter is Bolidin or Lindball Marmiquist electrical gravimeter. In this type of gravimeter, there are two condensers. One condenser is placed at the top and the other one is placed at the bottom, connected by a mass which has a spring attached to it, steel spring, see? So, if there is a change in the value of gravity, there is change in the value of the change in weight. So there is corresponding movement in the spring. Because of the movement in spring, there is changes in the plate separation of the capacitor. Now the changes in the plate separation changes the frequency of the tuned circuit to which the upper condenser is connected. Now this tuned circuit then sends a feedback to the lower condenser through a variable DC bias. So what it does, it introduces some amount of charge which produces the electric attractive electric field so as to counteract the or the counter balance counterbalance the changes in the value of gravity so the amount of charge that needs to be introduced in order to counteract the changes in the value of gravity which has resulted in the plate separation is the amount of change in the gravity from the null position so what is happening here is the changes in the value of gravity, small changes in the value of gravity, they are changing, sorry, it is changing the plate separation between the condenser. Now in order to bring the whole instrument back to its reference position, the amount of charge at the in the lower condenser is changed and this lower charge in the lower condenser is the amount of deviation or is the deviation of the gravity from the null position. These gravimeters they claim to have a sensitivity of 0.1 milligal. So what we have seen in stable gravimeters that there is an element, a responsive element which responds to changes in the value of gravity and there is displacement from the null position or the reference position. So there is also restoring force which is measured by the displacement that counteracts the changes in the value of gravity. By means of electrical, optical or mechanical means, we magnify the displacement in order, in order to make them detected. Okay? In the Hartley gravimeter, the magnification is both by mechanical and optical means. In case of Hoyt gravimeter, it's, it's done by optical means using a system of mirror. And in case of Bolden gravimeter, it is done by electrical means by changing the amount of 
charge and it is done through a DC voltage by applying a variable DC voltage so that the amount of charge in the lower condenser changes so as the electrical field between the condenser changes so as to bring the plate separation or the plate distance between the plate back to its original position which has been previously changed by the changes in the value of gravity because the spring moved in response to the changes in the value of gravity which brought a change which brought a change in the plate separation which then prompted the lower condenser to change to bring a change in the amount of charge so as to counteract the change it changes in the gravity and this amount of charge that needs to be introduced is thus a measure of the change in the value of gravity so i hope you understood it in the next lecture we'll be discussing about the principle of unstable gravimeter and the types of unstable gravimeter have a nice day